Hey, this is Nina from NV Fine Art Studio. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to discuss five main do's and don'ts of painting skies and clouds. I think painting skies and clouds is one of the most freeing experiences in watercolor. First of all, the majority of the time you will be using the wet on wet technique. And secondly, you don't have to be precise in reflecting what's in front of you. Painting wet on wet is exciting. You let the paint and water have its own life on the paper. And you're just there to observe and enjoy the surprising results and leave all the fears and concerns over getting a perfect result out of the equation. Okay, let's begin. First of all, clouds have soft edges and are usually lighter than the sky. Don't paint clouds over the dried sky. If you painted the sky first as your first wash, don't let it dry completely and then paint gray clouds over it with patches of opaque grays and whites. In this instance, your clouds will have hard edges all over, they will be darker than the skies, and they will look almost like they're attached to the flat surface. It's best to leave some areas of the paper white while you paint blue skies or lift it out later. So, paint blue skies, dark at the top and lighter towards the horizon, leave some areas white. Then take a clean brush and lift some paint while the wash is still damp. Remember to aim for the rounded form at the top and flat at the bottom. If you don't want to use a brush, you can lift with a piece of scrunched tissue paper. That usually makes a really nice rounded and unpredictable shape. Also remember, clouds are three-dimensional objects, so don't leave them to be white. If you decided to paint a landscape that is all about skies, don't make the clouds overly simplified. If you look closely at the clouds, you may notice, while being white, they actually have a few shades of gray values. If you're not too familiar with values, there is a link to my value study video. After you practice with creating white clouds, let's work on adding some dimension. As always, remember to do gradual shadowing. The top of the clouds is highlighted by the sun, therefore this part is the lightest and stays white. Next, add a very light shadow to two-thirds of the clouds. I'd suggest in value 8 or 9, depending on the darkness of your sky. Observe how it spreads over it. If you think that some edges are too rough, take a damp clean brush and soften the edges. Next, while this light gray is still wet, add a one or two steps darker gray to the bottom of your clouds. The darkness of this value would depend on the atmosphere you want to create. The darker the clouds, the heavier and stormier they will appear. Clouds are made of water vapor and are very reflective. And by this, I mean they reflect light and color. Do not paint them using plain gray, like neutral tint or paints gray. Especially if you're painting sunrise or sunset. First of all, they will look like they don't belong to this painting. And secondly, white of the clouds will look too light. During sunrise and sunset, or any other hour when the sun is at an angle, the light is not as bright and rays get dispersed. So, the clouds start to look darker and radiate different colors. In this instance, it's best to use warmer tones for the skies and clouds. At this golden hour, everything including skies and clouds get extra contrast and saturation. Most of the photographers also prefer sunset and sunrises due to this bonus feature. So, the skies start from darker blue above us, go through pale blue, to pale warm yellow, to golden orange. With clouds, instead of adding pale gray, we add warm mixes of ochre and siennas and dark warm grays, such as indigo and violet, or cobalt and red, or ultramarine sienna and crimson. Remember about the rules of perspective. Don't make clouds same shape and size. If you make your clouds all round and roughly the same size at the top of your paper and towards the horizon, your painting will look flat and unrealistic and you will not have the sense of depth and perspective in your landscape. It is best to go from circle to line like clouds towards the horizon. If you want this sense of movement in your landscape, remember to have larger rounded clouds at the top of your paper and thin line-like strikes imitating clouds at the horizon. The funniest thing is that our brain doesn't believe our eyes. It is the most common mistake of beginner artists to paint things in perspective as they're right in front of you. You see a cloud, at the perspective it becomes a line, but your brain still tells you, clouds around, draw it round. 
same as with the tree shadows. Here's the link to my 5 do's and don'ts of painting trees for comparison. My last tip is on painting a storm. Don't add the rain from the clouds after your clouds have dried. This way your rain will look like it's attached to the clouds instead of falling out of them. Rain is a part of the cloud with much heavier droplets that are finally making their way to the ground under the gravity. Paint it this way. Paint stormy clouds wet on wet and on elevated surface. When you are done with your sky background and it's still damp, start adding darker and warmer gray. Remember to keep the mixture relatively thick and one value up than your desired dry result. Stormy clouds will look more convincing when they're darker. Then lift out a few areas on the top of your clouds for the highlights. Tilt your board and wait for the paint to drop down. If your clouds don't start to rain on its own, spray it with mist board. Wait a little for the rain to dry a bit. Then add a few strokes to the bottom of the clouds to create a rounded soft edge. Let's put this theory into practice and paint a beautiful landscape with clouds.